Hey, this is Dr. Stewart. Thanks for your interest in medical marijuana. I'm going to go through a number of things with you today. If at any time you need to exit out of the video, just go ahead and press the home button at the bottom of the iPad. So we're going to go through the history of the marijuana a little bit, how the state categorizes it, and then how you actually will go about getting and using the marijuana. So marijuana has been legal in Florida since 2014 under very limited circumstances. Those circumstances were expanded with the passage of Amendment 2 in November of 2016, which became law several months later. Marijuana cannot be smoked legally in Florida yet. There was a judicial ruling that lifted a stay on smokable marijuana, and that has yet to be worked out at the Department of Health. Okay, uh, Marijuana currently comes in several formulations. There are pills, sprays, oils, tinctures, a vape, which I don't commonly do, a rectal preparation, which no one wants, and a patch. Marijuana as a plant has multiple molecules. There's two, the two most important are THC and CBD. CBD does the work, THC tells it what to do. So if you buy just CBD oil, it helps some people, but some people require that you add THC to that. And when you do that, you actually get marijuana. At a low concentration, less than 0.8% THC, the state calls that low THC marijuana. It's commonly called Charlotte's Web, named after a little girl, Charlotte, whose family moved to Colorado in an effort to get her the drug to treat her 300 seizures a day. Once you get above 0.8% THC, now you're dealing with what the state calls full medical cannabis, and that's a spectrum of everything else. At the bottom end of that spectrum, you can treat pain, a little bit more THC, and you can treat things like PTSD and depression. A little bit more THC gets you high, and a little bit more gets you paranoid. So there is a window where we want to stay. What you're going to need to do is to fill out the application. Now the first thing we're going to have you do is to fill out a consent, and by now you may have already done that. There's just lots of information you need to know about, and you have to go through this for us. The application is this. This is the paper form. Okay, The application is completed very simply on these two pages. It's not even really a page and a half. You're going to mark that this is an initial application and you're going to fill out a registry number which we will give you in a few minutes. You're going to complete the rest of this. Make sure that you put your email address in here legibly. You need to go by CVS or Walgreens and get a passport photo. That'll cost you about $15. You want to staple that here and then you're going to sign and date this form. You may select a legal representative on your behalf who can order and take delivery of marijuana. Most people don't do that. If you're going to do that, your representative will need to fill out an application as well. In addition to this one and a third page application, you're going to need to include a $75 check made out to the Florida Department of Health. You'll also include a copy of your Florida driver's license. Okay? You are going to mail all of that to the address listed on page two of the application. It's an address in Tampa. And we do recommend that you send it certified so that you can track it and they have to sign for it. Alternatively, just above that address, you'll see that there's a website there. That's to enter your application online and we recommend that you do that instead. The application process goes much faster. We've actually had a patient who got her approval in as little as a week. Most everybody else now, it's one to four weeks. Okay. When you do your application online, you're not going to need to go get a passport photo. The state will just pull your driver's license picture. You're also not going to need to send them a copy of your driver's license because clearly the state already has one. And your $75 payment can be made online with a credit card and usually about a $3 convenience fee. Okay. Now, you as soon as as soon as we enter you into the email or into the registry rather you are going to get two emails straight away 
The first is going to be uh, your username to access the database. Now, the registry is where we store all of your information and where we put your orders in. You're going to have access to that to see what's going on, to see when your orders were put in, when they expire, how much you've used, and all of that. Your first email will be your, user, your username for that website. Your username is going to be your email address. Okay. The second email is a temporary password, and you'll use both of those, the username and the password, to log in for the first time, at which time you'll have to change your password to something that's easier for you to remember. Okay. Now, your third email will come to you several weeks later. Your third email is going to be your temporary marijuana card. So your marijuana card comes to you by email initially. Okay. You're going to want to print that. Okay. At that point, you're able to purchase marijuana. Your hard copy card, which looks like a driver's license, will come to you in the mail several weeks wait later. You do not need to wait on it. You need to understand, however, that your card will need to be renewed annually, and we'll give you some paperwork to indicate how to do that. Okay. Once you get your card in the email, you're able to purchase marijuana from any dispensary in the state, and there are multiple ones. You do not necessarily have to purchase one from a store nearby you. All of the dispensaries deliver, and nobody charges more than $25, okay? What we're going to have you do is to understand that our order is an oral formulation. Typically, that's where we start, folks. So an order formulation is done for two major reasons. The first, is that an oral formulation lasts longer. So if you've got a chronic problem, which is why you're here most likely, then you want to treat a chronic long-lasting problem with a long-lasting solution and an oral order makes more sense. The second thing is that an oral order allows a lot of flexibility. So if I put an oral formulation in, then you're going to be able to purchase pills, sprays, tinctures, or oils. If I put an order in for a topical, well, you're by and large limited to a lotion. Some dispensaries do have patches. So we want to give you as many options as we can, and we want to treat your problem with as long-lasting solution as we can. Now, when we put the order in, we put it in as a certain number of milligrams, a certain number of times a day, for a certain number of days. The reason we do that is because we're trying to get to a maximum allowed uh, number of milligrams for you in a time period. We don't exactly expect you to follow the order specifically. So, for example, let's say that you take a blood pressure pill and it's twice a day. Your doctor wants you to take that exactly as prescribed. That's not what we're talking about here. We're simply trying to get you an amount of marijuana that can be purchased and you get to use it however you want. You may not use the full amount that we order. You may use, uh, instead of 10 milligrams three times a day, you may use five milligrams, five milligrams, and 20 milligrams at night. That's totally fine. We do not care. We ultimately want you experimenting with the product. Marijuana cannot overdose you, okay? It's a very safe drug in that regard, all right? Now, when you get your order, we're gonna ask you to go to the dispensary and talk to them. These are experts in their area. Just like if you were researching something you don't understand, cars, speakers, whatever, you would go and you would talk to someone with experience and knowledge in the area and you'd solicit their recommendations. This is what you're going to do. So go to the dispensaries and tell them what your problems are. Tell them the effect that you want, the side effects that you don't want. If you've got any marijuana experience in the past, share that with them. That will help them guide you in a good direction. And they may recommend product A, B, and C, and that's what you'll try for the first purchase. Next time, you might purchase products D, E, and F. You might go to a different dispensary, and we do encourage that because not all marijuana is the same. There are two major breeds. Uh, there are multiple strains. People process them differently and mix them differently. And so there's a lot of opportunity for you to try different things. We do encourage that, okay? We will plan to see you back here in 90 days, okay? The state does not let us do a 90-day order. So our orders are two 45-day orders back-to-back, -back, and they expire. So let's suppose that you're kind of slow getting your application off, or the state happens to be slow approving it, and, they, and you get your emailed approval on day 46 from today. 
sorry, your first 45 day order has expired, it's gone. However, your next 45 day order is already there ready to go. If, however, let's say you get your, your first approval letter on day 44, well, you're able to purchase that entire 45 day supply all at once, they don't prorate it. The very next day, you've got a brand new order that's become active and you can purchase from that. So while that would be fairly expensive to buy all that marijuana all at once, you could do it. And we would hope that you would have bought several different types of marijuana, maybe even from several different dispensaries, and you'd have a lot to try. Okay? We do encourage you to buy small bottles. We don't want you to buy a big bottle of anything because what if it doesn't work? You've wasted your money and you've wasted your allowance, that total allowable amount that you can have. Okay? We recommend that you start typically with a liquid formulation rather than pills. If you take a pill and it's too strong, well, all of those pills are going to be too strong and you've wasted your money, you've wasted your allowance. But if you buy a liquid of some sort, you can meter out different doses, different amounts of, of therapy so that you can see how you respond. When you do that, you want to start with a little bit. So typically they'll come in, say, a, a one cc syringe. Start with a quarter cc, wait six to eight hours, which is how long the drug should last. Try half a cc, then three quarters and then a cc and keep going. What I don't recommend that you do is drug stack or dose stack, meaning you take a little bit, you wait an hour, take a little bit more, wait an hour, take a little bit more, because then it's not as clear uh, to determine how much actually was effective. So you take the drug, let it wear off, increase the dose, and repeat the cycle, okay? Now, we need to talk about some cautions. Marijuana is federally illegal, okay? Don't take this across state lines. If you take it to a state where it's medically legal, you can still get arrested because you're not on their registry. If you take it to a state where it's recreationally legal, you'll be fine, but how are you gonna get there? You've either gotta take marijuana on a plane, which is a felony, or you've gotta drive it across state lines, which is also a felony. Okay, so Florida marijuana needs to stay in Florida. If you have it in your car, you need to make sure you have your marijuana card on you so that if you have an interaction with a law enforcement officer, you'll be able to show that you're justified in having the product. If you're driving, you need to remember, medical marijuana is gonna do to you what marijuana does to people. And if you take too much marijuana, you can be impaired. And if you drive impaired, you will be arrested for DUI. So be mindful of that. Okay. You also need to remember that federal law is applied in federal buildings, even in Florida. So don't take marijuana into federal courthouses, prisons, public schools, the VA, the post office, public transportation, airports. You need to be mindful of what you have and where you are. Okay. I don't mind people, for example, having a concealed carry gun. Your bank generally frowns on it. So remember, what you have, where you are, act accordingly, okay? The long and short of all of this is get your application done, preferably online. Do your homework. Contact the different dispensaries. We will give you the pamphlets for a couple of dispensaries with whom we have somewhat of a relationship. We don't care who you use. Find the different dispensaries, choose one who offers good customer service, a good product at a fair price, use them, play around with, with the drug, see what works, come back in 90 days and tell us how things went. We may simply need to refill your order. Maybe you're doing great. Maybe we need to make a change. And at that time we will, okay? So hopefully this will be an excellent therapy for you. We have great success with marijuana. I will tell you that I have never seen a therapy do as much as marijuana does for as many different things with as few side effects and won't kill you. It is absolutely wonderful therapy properly done. And we're very optimistic about its success in your health. So I wanna talk a little bit more about marijuana and how I'm probably going to order it for you. As you'll recall from the first part of the video, the state divides marijuana into low THC and full THC medical cannabis. Low THC is going to be very useful for things like arthritis and muscle pain. Full THC is going to be useful for a lot of other options, a lot of other conditions. The low THC I'd like for you to use typically as a pill form throughout the day. 
most of our patients have some sort of underlying arthritis or muscle pain and what the low THC is going to do taken daily is create a nice foundation and that foundation is going to to carry us through most days and we're going to use a full THC option on top of it. So the low THC option, let's remember, doesn't affect you cognitively. So you can take as much as you want and you're going to remain clear headed. Because of that, I typically recommend that you use that in pill form. Pills are easy. They don't smell bad. They're easy to swallow. And if you drop them on the floor, they're easy to pick up. The order will typically read 20 milligrams four times a day. Each pill usually comes as a 10 milligram pill, so that means two pills four times a day. I recommend that when you're going to put something in your mouth. So that's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a toothbrush at bedtime. If that's convenient for you, great. If your daily activities carry you away during the day and you're not able to take pills during the day, it's totally fine. This is a low THC product. It's not going to affect you no matter, at least cognitively, no matter how you take it throughout the day. So take it in a way that is financially affordable, is convenient for your lifestyle, and is helpful. On top of that, we're going to use the full THC option. Now the full THC treats a host of different conditions to include traditional pain, neuropathic pain, nausea, anxiety, some people use it to treat cancer. It's got a variety of usefulness to it. But the full THC can affect you cognitively. So if you take too much, you will have some of those effects. And for that reason, I typically recommend that the full THC products be taken as a liquid. That way you can meter out different doses, much like you would do for a child taking Tylenol. You give them different amounts depending on their weight. Well, so if you're using these differing amounts, you may find that at night you want a larger amount because if it's too strong, it doesn't matter. Maybe you'll get a better night's rest. Perhaps during the day when you're trying to be productive, you'll use a little less. You may find that on a full stomach, you need more. On an empty stomach, you need less. You may find when you go to the dispensaries that the product which is for sleep works better, so you require less, than the product that may be used for anxiety treatment. These are things that you're going to play with, you're going to experiment with them, and so you need to have the product in a form that allows you to adjust the dose. At some point in the future when you find that the, that the product works well at a specific dose and that dose also comes in a pill form, feel free to switch over to the pill form. Admittedly, it is more convenient. This will take a, a period of several months most likely for you to get things figured out. Remember that you're going to buy a low THC product to use throughout the day. You may find one THC product that works well for anxiety, another THC product that works well for pain, and you're going to have to figure out how much to use at what time of the day under what circumstances to get, get the best result. You may also need to remember that all dispensaries do marijuana in different ways. So you might like to find a product that is useful for pain from Certera, one that is useful for anxiety from True Leave, and your low THC product may come from Liberty Health Sciences or even a different dispensary. All that is completely okay. This is an order or a recommendation, not a prescription. The difference being a prescription delineates for you exactly how much to take, in what form, at what times. My order or recommendation for marijuana simply sets forth some guidelines and you have a tremendous amount of flexibility and freedom in figuring out what works very well for you. Do that over the next period of two to three months and then when you come back to see us, tell us how you did and we'll adjust your order accordingly. Hope that additional information is helpful.